modern writers can't write Superman. I have been a Superman fan since as long as I can remember. When I was young, I used to collect Superman comics and almost anything having to do with him. I have, in fact, at my mother's house, in her attic, boxes upon boxes upon boxes of uh, comic books that I collected over that time period. I kind of came in at the middle tail end of the Silver Age. Now, I got really, really lucky because my grandparents, well, they had five children, four of whom were boys, and they collected late Golden Age and early Silver Age comics. So at my grandparents' ranch, in one of the buildings they used for storage, were tons and tons and tons of these Golden Age and Silver Age comics. So I got to read those comics. Incredibly lucky. Um, sadly, I think they're all gone now, which is too bad. I think today they might even be worth something. But as someone who was a fan, boy oh boy, was it really awesome to be able to read those comics uh, as they were originally put out. Um, just amazing. And Superman and Clark Kent are characters with whom I can personally identify. I probably have, I know I have, a much better handle on these characters than modern writers in either film or comics. Because to some extent, not completely, not Superman, but to some extent, his life actually parallels mine. Which is why I get so damned angry when modern writers just continuously blow this character now, how Superman's life sort of mirrors mine. I was born in a very small town in South Dakota. I grew up in a city, mid -to where I am now, Midtown, Lincoln, Nebraska, which at the time was a small city of about 100,000. It's about 250,000 now with a metro area, Omaha, Nebraska. There's about 1 million people that's half an hour away, so it's grown quite a lot in my lifetime. But I did spend anywhere from two weeks to a month until I was 15 out at my grandparents' very rural working cattle ranch. This is extremely rural South Dakota. And in fact, there's one, you know, the whole thing looks amazingly like the Kent farm. It really does. Um, and it's very isolated. I've talked about this before, but it's worth mentioning because I'm pulling this out as a clip, and I hope maybe one of the writers on Superman will watch me. This is extremely rural, South Dakota. So rural that most people probably don't believe that it would exist in modern times. In the piece of family ranch land that's still in the family, it is two miles from the cabin that's out there to the nearest gravel road. And those two miles are ruts that have been made over many, many years by uh, pickup trucks going out to check cattle. They're ruts. That's all they are. When the grass grows around them, if nobody has been through those uh, things to get through it, it's interesting because you can't see the ruts. You just put the car in the ruts, and you kind of let the car go following the ruts. <laughs> After you get to the gravel road, it is then another 40 or so miles to the nearest paved road. And after that, that paved road is about 10 miles to the nearest town of Wall, South Dakota. Nobody does snow removal on those gravel roads, and certainly not on those ruts. Right now, out there, they probably have a fair amount of snow. This would be the time of year they'd be getting snow. And the way that they work out there is they go into town, they get about six months' worth of, worth of provisions, and then they drive back before the snow hits because there is every likelihood that they will be completely snowed in for three to six months, depending on the weather. That is how rural that really is, and it still goes on today. Now, the other thing is, in addition to that, I spent 10 years in Chicago, which is close enough to Metropolis as to be no difference whatsoever. And of course, growing up, I was a geek. Hell, I'm still a geek. I'm a geek. And particularly as a child, I identified with Clark Kent's geekiness and, of course, wished that I could just take off my glasses and become Superman as he did. And to be honest, I still entirely identify with this character, and sometimes I wish I could just take off my glasses and become Superman. Because, damn it, particularly after this film, I want to fly. 
Now, modern writers don't get Superman right because they cannot understand his backstory. They, do, they are mostly urbanites who have never lived in the places that I have described. And rural life requires an enormous amount of self-reliance. And that's simply not present in cities. Now, for example, when I was out there, when I got to, a, when I was young, five or so, I was involved in a uh, cattle roundup. Now, in those things, you have pickup trucks out there, and you also get to be put on horses because sometimes the cattle will drift off and they'll go into places where a pickup truck just can't go. I spent eight hours on a horse. I spent eight hours on a horse. My grandmother likes to like to talk about it when she was alive. What I remember was the moment we got to the uh, pasture seven miles away where we were putting these cattle. I went down to the river, the Cheyenne River, which is nearby, and I got off my horse, Babe, my father's horse, and I waded into the water because I was, my legs were bowed from sitting on that horse for eight hours, and the funny thing was Babe wandered in, to the, just walked in with me, got a little deeper, but had the same problem, you know, where, the, where I'd been sitting on her, because in my family, you didn't get to ride with a uh, saddle until such time as you could ride bareback. So I rode that whole thing bareback. So she was pretty hot and sweaty herself and just wandered into the, into the uh, river with me. But in addition to that, you know, anybody who's beyond a certain age, you help out with the chores. Um, a working ranch like that is a family business. You know, everybody helps out. And so a lot of times I would be with my grandfather when we went to check cattle, usually did that twice a day by pickup. And we would also do things like walk fences because fences can break or cattle can try to push against them to get through. And so you'd have to walk along, usually in an incredibly hot summer day. And if the fence was down someplace, pounded in new posts, repaired all of the barbed wire, and, you know, that would take time. And sometimes you'd have what we used to call a crawly cow, and that's a cow that didn't care about the barbed wire. And so the cow would just, you know, squeeze itself through, usually into some neighbor's pasture. Well, you got to get your cow out of there, because every blade of grass on a working ranch is important. And so you don't let your cattle graze excuse me, in somebody else's land for very long. You get them out as soon as you possibly can. So we had to do stuff like that as well. Now, fun thing about that was um, I, uh, my grandfather taught me to drive at the age of 12 because that's not unusual out there. And it's not illegal either. Um, out there, you're helping out with chores. So the soon as you can get to the point where you can drive vehicles and or heavy equipment, you get to do it. And so there was a lot of that. Even when I was really young, um, I helped out around the house with my grandmother, you know, pulling weeds. I certainly remember pulling a lot of weeds and just generally, you know, doing that sort of work around um, in between when I was reading comics, reading a lot of comics. Larry, Larry says, the Kent Farm was filmed in Canada. Yeah, there's a scene in there when they're uh, at Jonathan Kent's funeral. And they pull up, and it's a view of a valley. And to me, it is extraordinary because it is just like, you look down in that valley and I go, my God, that is just exactly like the valley where my grandparents' ranch was. It was in a valley, and it was just amazing. But you have to have a lot of self-reliance, and I'll give you an example of this. When my grandfather passed away a couple of years ago, we had an extended... Now, we have a, a family uh, cemetery out there. Plot for me. That's where I'm going to end up. And in order to bury my grandfather, a, a extended relative, I think like a second cousin or something, who had a backhoe, came over, and he dug the grave with the backhoe. And then myself and a cousin and my uh, uh, living uncles, we lowered that casket into the ground by ourselves. And then our cousin covered it over. And the reason that happened was it's way out in rural South Dakota. If you don't do it, it don't get done. That is how it has to work. If that's how everything works, if you don't do it, it don't get done. So that is the sort of thing you have to have. However, 
while self-reliance is definitely key to surviving, and I mean surviving out there, sometimes you need help. And you give help to your neighbors, and you receive help from your neighbors. And you do this for practical reasons. Just in terms of being nice, you do it for that. But also for very practical reasons. If you don't give help, you don't get help. And you might go bankrupt, or in some cases, you can die out there. And this is why. Um, hi, Captain Jesse. Glad to see you tonight. Uh, hope you'll enjoy this review. This is why, for example, in this film, when Superman sets down the helicopter, he's caught it, and he puts it down on top of the Daily Planet building, he doesn't immediately fly the injured pilot to the hospital. Instead, he calls to the two guys who've been running basically ground control on top of the planet, who are just basically standing there slack-jawed at what they've just seen, and he says to them, gentlemen, this man needs help, because he expects them to do good deeds the way that he was raised to do them. He expects that others will take over and do the good deeds that they can do after he's already done the fantastic things that they can't. Now, modern writers also detest what is traditionally called the American way. And the American way isn't what they think. And it's not what a lot of people now think. And it's not old-fashioned. It is not bad. And it is not camp. It sounds like ultra-patriotism, but that's not really what it is. The American way, as basically defined until 10 or 15 years into my lifetime, was a small, limited government that interferes with freedom, not at all. That is what has traditionally set America, the United States, apart from every single other nation on earth. Other nations have constitutions that say what the citizens can do. Here in the United States, we have a constitution that says what the government can and can't do and is supposed to have extraordinarily limited powers. Now, that's not the case today, sadly. Sadly, today we have a giant federal government that controls almost every aspect of your life. But the American way, traditionally, is simply a small government that does not interfere with freedom. And if anything, it is there to protect freedoms. Modern writers are socialists and communists who detest the notion of a limited government. And so when Superman very, very um, plainly and straightforwardly plays it totally straight in this film, that's the right way to do it, when he says he fights for truth, justice, and the American way, it's not old-fashioned. It's not bad. It's not camp. This is a man who is fighting for what the United States has traditionally been as part of the American way. Limited government that does not interfere with citizens' uh, rights. Now, if you were writing Superman correctly today with all of everything that goes on, this huge government that controls your life, all of the spying that we have going on, and all the cameras everywhere, I truly believe that if you were writing him today correctly, Superman would be a libertarian and not a conservative, you might think. He is definitely a big believer in law and order, but the kind of law and order he has always supported isn't the same law and order as we have today. In his world, in his worldview, his hope is that the people in charge of law and order are good people, where a law enforcement is presumed to be the good guys. And so when he takes people over to them and done bad things, he expects that system to work. Sadly, in many places in the United States, we have too much corruption for that to work. And I, that's why I think if Superman was being written correctly today, he would be a libertarian who would object to that sort of thing. He fights for truth, justice, and the American way. And if the justice part doesn't work, he's going to fight for it. If the American way part doesn't work, he's going to fight for it. And same with truth. Fighting for truth, justice, and the American way is not a bad thing. It's not old-fashioned. It is not camp. It is truly serious, and that is why Christopher Reeve plays it as seriously as he does. It just comes out. Lois Lane says, what are you here for? And he says, I'm here to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. And he's just totally straightforward about it. It's a great way to deliver that line. 
Larry Larry says, George Reeves Superman uh, series opened with every episode with truth, justice, and the American way. And that was at a time when people understood what the American way was, that it was what set us apart from every single other nation on earth. Limited government that is there, if anything, to protect freedoms of people. So you guys at DC or at Warner Brothers who are making these movies, call me. You need to. Right now, call me, because I will deliver scripts for you that work for this character. You will otherwise just continue to see his popularity wane, as it has been doing it over time. You are blowing it big time because you do not understand this character, you don't understand how that rural living actually impacts him, and you don't understand the traditional concept of the American way. Call me. Call me right now. You need to. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.